is Don Curley. Uh, I'm an abstract artist and collage maker. Uh, I'm here in my studio in Connecticut. I've been uh, working a long time now, about 45 years. Uh, I'm entirely self-taught, so I've been on my own, my own little solitary path that I've been pursuing. And uh, welcome uh, to my world. Okay. okay. I was in college. Uh, I went to three different colleges while well, I was... In college, I was doing art as a hobby, and I was doing these geometric designs, and then I used graph paper to sketch on, and I did all of these uh, intricate three-dimensional um, designs. I was, I was working on grid paper, and then it occurred to me, well, what happens if you take the grid paper and you take the lines and you make them fatter this way and fatter that way and what happens to the image and I was doing all this stuff with straight lines and um, and then I got to I took a class in art in college and I got to graduate school I was in graduate school for social science and I lived with a, uh, an artist an MFA candidate and I was doing more and more. And then I decided to quit school and become an artist. And I decided just, I knew it was going to be extremely difficult. I knew it was going to be like the hardest choice I could make. And so it would also be the most challenging. And I decided I was not going to get married. I wasn't going to have children. I was going to follow this, and that was in 1975, and I quit graduate school, and uh, I became a kind of a wandering studio artist for the last 45 years. Sure, yeah, I was inspired by everything. Inspired by nature, mostly, uh, but... Uh, I guess what attracted me most was the life. Uh, what kind of life that in, seemed that would seem to be, and that kind of life appealed to me because it's very open and it's expansive, um, and uh, it's very expansive. There's no end to it, and there's no end to the to the depth of it, especially abstract art and abstract artists. Uh, so that appealed to me. Actually, the image that came to mind was if you're stretching for something and it's beyond your reach, but you're stretching, 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 and your arm actually, little by little, your arm gets longer and longer and longer. And that's what it seemed to me to be uh, the kind of life, uh, you know, choosing something that is so difficult. I had no training. I'm entirely self-taught. I've been out there on my own. Uh, and uh, um, it's been challenging, always challenging, a, a roller coaster, roller coaster ride. Sure, it could be urban. I've had experiences where I look down alleyways and they're like perfection in terms of artistic composition, uh, things like that. But primarily walking in nature, walking on trails. When I'm walking on a trail and I'm going around different turns and presented with constantly changing different scenarios, what is that? But that's in improvisation. I look at what's going on and the way everything is, and it is an improvisation by Mother Nature. Uh, and I am constantly impressed by it. And uh, so my work echoes that. 
I work with improvisation. I don't try to manipulate things. What I do is I set up I set up an arena for the colors and the materials <clears throat> to assert themselves. So it's unplanned. There's a lot of surprises, just like walking on a trail through nature. A lot of surprises, a lot of wonderful surprises um, that happen. Uh, and also working this way, a lot of things don't work out. What I'm trying to do is create, uh, not art really, but I'm trying to create spontaneous life on the canvas. So a lot of times things don't work out. I've had a lot of failures and that's part of the roller coaster. But um, now the success is, you know, a lot of artists, by the time they get up in their 60s, a lot of artists that are, that you see that are, um, that are, that are very good, that impress you, a lot of, you'll find a lot of these people are in their 60s and 70s and stuff before they're really clicking. And uh, so now that I'm uh, to that age, things are clicking more for me. I'm happy to report. Well, we're looking at, if you look at human consciousness, it's something we all share. You have, you have it, I have it. Um, and if you explore it, uh, these, these paintings are an opportunity to explore your own consciousness. And when you get deeper and deeper into the paintings, the paintings um, are constructed so there's no central focus. So your eye is pushed all around continuously and you discover all these little things, all these um, separate passages. And as you discover this, you lose yourself in the painting and it takes you to deeper levels of your consciousness. And that's where I join you. That's where we're together. It doesn't matter if it's now a hundred years from now or whatever, you know, it's beyond time. Germans, the German expressionists, uh, more than more than others. My work is expressionistic, so I have, uh, I'm kind of in tune with the uh, with the German expressionist um, outlook. I like Francis Bacon. Yeah. Living outside the studio, I'm an ordinary person. When I come into the studio, this is a kind of a special place, a sacred place. You enter into a sacred space. <clears throat> you create these things. So you're capturing the special, you're ca capturing <clears throat> uh, beyond the, the, the mundane and the ordinary. Um, so they are special. And then you, those are outside the studio. Those would be really wonderful, special experiences. So inside the studio, I'm taking that kind of thing, capturing it. So then I can drag it out of the studio. I can put it on the wall and, uh, and people can, experience uh, that special place. Well, that's one common thread uh, in my stuff is uh, 
is colors, a lot of colors. So even in the structured pieces, there's a lot of colors. A lot of times I run out of colors. I'm like, oh, I need more colors, but I've used them all. I use a color and I put it to the side and I use a new one and then, and then I run out of colors. I'm like, I'm not quite done yet. I need like four or five more colors, but I've used them all. So if you look at my work, even in the structured stuff, it's still, in that case, it's a, <clears throat> it's still setting up uh, a, a framework for the colors to assert themselves. Yeah, I do, I do raised collages and assemblages, deep, deep things. What I do is uh, uh, I'll, put, uh, I'll mount something that's deep, like let's say you fold up a large piece of paper, a few of them, and you glue them down and everything. Then if you just drag paint across the top, well, what happens? Well, the paper itself creates the design. All I'm doing is like dragging paint across the top and this design comes out. That's the materials itself, the materials asserting themselves and displaying themselves and, you know, surprise, you know? So, um, so I work with materials that I can, that are deep and that I can deform, that deform really well. But I have a lot of ideas. See, the thing is, I'm also an, I'm an experimenter. So that's another reason I have a lot of things that haven't worked out. I'm experimenting. So I do have a, a pretty wide range. Now that I'm getting older, you can see more of a common thread but it used to be a problem for me because for me to have a show, it would look like a group show. It wouldn't look like the show of, a, of one person. And uh, that, always seemed, I always, that always seemed to work against me. It's like, well, the dealers wanna see a concept, like one concept developed through time. That's what they're looking for. But art, there is no, the only, there aren't any real rules. People, if you're good enough, you can break all the rules. So I see artists as well that are successful that have a wild range. So I don't feel so bad about it. Credit card, I've used credit cards. Um, I've used different things. I'll use, well, what happens is in my process, is I start out with an idea and um, I'm working on it. And then little by little, things get more frantic. I start losing myself in the work and things get more frantic. And when things get more frantic, then I start grabbing things. So I don't really, if, if I look at a piece, there's some pieces that are really wonderful from five years ago or something. And if someone would ask me, well, how did you make it? I won't be able to tell you. There's different effects there, but I don't know how I got them because I was just grabbing things, credit cards, pieces, I'll just look around, but I get in a hyper, in a heightened state. And so, um, and so I just look around on my shelves and around, it's like, I need something. What is it? What is it? What's that something I need right now? And uh, it could be anything. I, I also use water-based and oil-based that aren't supposed to be together. I may put them together, things like that. Yes, I'm inspired in, in each direction. I have, a. I say, oh, I would love to do a landscape. Oh, I'd love to do a path in the woods. I would love to do all this stuff. I look at other artists and say, and I would have this great desire to do that kind of thing, but um, I can't. I have to stay a little focused. So I'm. So yeah, I would love to do many things. I would love to do my own style of portraiture. You know, you name it. I would love to, but um, I work kind of slowly, so. I have to try to stay a little focused, you know?
No, it's just one more things to try. You know, there's a, I know there's this underlying assumption that the bigger the piece is, the more serious the work is. You know, the farther away from the wall it is, the more serious it is. Um, I had an idea. I was. I used to work in multiple panels. Actually, it's better, I find, if I could just find one format of canvas and stick to it, then you can just go boom, 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 and they'll all stack together. You can, you know, and, and you don't have to spend so much time stretching canvases or doing this and doing that. But I did have an idea for larger canvases, four by five feet. That's the biggest I've got, I've gotten. And um, so I wanted to do like 20 of them and just see where it would take me. So I did seven. And the thing I found out about these bigger canvases is, excuse me, that they take forever. They, they were taking so long to do it. So I did seven of them. And uh, now, I've, now I'm down to three by four feet. Uh, I think that's perfect because it's big enough to be like a serious, you can have a serious major work, three by four feet. You know, you can see it. it uh, it's big enough to, to make a big impression, but it's not overly large. It's still, uh, it's small enough to where I can work. It doesn't take forever to, to finish one. So that's my size right now, three by four feet. I just kind of want to hang out there, but you know, I'll still be doing collages and things like that. Anything, anything that deforms, I like things that deform well, uh, because then they're making their own, they're showing their own secrets when they're deforming them. If I'm, you know, lovingly striking them with a sledgehammer, then uh, kind of inner secrets are coming out, you know? A little, not too much. I start with an idea, but usually that idea, well, not really. It's hard to say, there's no set rules. But uh, a lot of times I start with an idea. You have to have an idea to start with. Uh, I start with a vision. Um, and a lot of times that gets lost pretty quickly in the execution. That's the, um, the way of the improvisation. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking, probably my, my, my studio work is probably 80% thinking and uh, it, uh, working it out in my head. Uh, because I want, I'm very, um, concerned now not to have any false steps, not to spend a lot of time on something that doesn't work out. So I really try to go to make it evolve in my head first and really feel confident in my head before I start. That doesn't mean that it's going to go according to plan. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. There's a lot of downs. It's, it, you know, I'm working pretty much in isolation. Um, and it goes slower. It goes very, very slow, my development. Uh, I think if I had been in uh Okay, art academy. I don't know. It's hard to say. There's pluses and minuses, but um, I think you're right in saying that working uh, totally on my own kind of means I go like at a snail's pace as I'm kind of a lot of times reinventing the wheel. No, no, thank goodness. Uh, no, I did a lot of really mediocre work. I did um, the first about, the first 15 years of my studio work, I, I wasn't very good at all. I did a couple hundred pieces that 
I destroyed. Um, and then I, I really felt like I was going nowhere. And I took a break. Uh, this was in the, the 90s, the early 1990s. I took a break. I didn't do art. And then, um, and then slowly I started getting ideas. Like if I started again, what would it look like? What would I be doing? And it took me a long time to make the decision because it was a big decision for me. And I began again. And when I started the second time, that was right around 1998, uh, I started at a much higher level. When I started again, the first few pieces I did, I was like, I really impressed myself. It was on a much higher level. So uh, it's been advancing since then. Well, five years ago, I was, I was like telling myself that I have to improve, I have to, show some improvement in the work. I wasn't happy with the level that the work was at. And I'm happy to report that in the last, over the last four or five years or something, I've seen uh, the work elevate. And that's the kind of thing that keeps you going. <laughs>
No, I just paint on canvas. I like things that can hang. Um, I don't want any problems with hanging. See, that's why I don't work on paper. Um, I don't want to make anything that needs a frame or that I have to worry about how am I going to present it or how am I going to save it? How am I going to keep it? How am I going to store it? I don't want any of those problems. So I just keep it. Uh, I'm trying to think of things I've done in the past. I've done things in the past with different materials, uh, tire treads. Um, when you go, when you drive on the highway, you see retreads, these long tire treads that are laying on the side of the road. I used to stop and get out and collect those and make hanging pieces out of those. Uh, I used to use found art. But I don't do that anymore. I used to see something lying in the street and I lived in some pretty dicey neighborhoods. So you see some interesting things lying around and I would bring them home and I would say, oh, this, you know, visually I would be crazy about this thing. So I would try to create a piece incorporating it or a piece around it or something. But that just ended up being such a uh, tied up so much time with so little results that I don't do that anymore. I don't pick things up out of the street anymore. <laughs> yeah, um, I I work with a lot of solvents. So I work with a spray bottle with solvents, you know, pushing uh, paint around when it's when it's wet. I work in it with a lot of layers. So I'll do that and then I'll come back later and put a layer on top of that. So I work with a lot of solvents, so it has to be flat on the floor. I work with drips and runs, but they're very controlled, very controlled drips and runs. So um, I'll work on a piece in, on the floor and then I'll just pick up one side of it and have it run, but really control control it and then I'll put the piece back on the floor and stop the run, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. I have to be careful because that's also, you can tie up a lot of time with, and, with, and not turn out. So I have to be careful about that. But um, I just did a piece, an old piece that was in three panels. You could call it a triptych and uh, uh, I just repainted that one, I turned it into something wild and, and new, still keeping the basic structure. And uh, that turned out really well. I just finished it. Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to buy canvases that are all the same size and to develop the painting um, over the over the uh, canvases, and so that would be a series. In fits and starts, now I've always had a kind of solitary existence. Uh, since I've been in Connecticut, I have joined the local art organizations, artist guilds. I'm in an artist guild right now. I joined one in Greenwich. I, uh, I had a, sh you know, I was in their show there and won a nice prize, made some prize money. Um, but these are things I get excited about in the beginning and then give it about a year or two down the line. And I go, this, I don't get enough return out of it. What I'm looking for is this great community of artists and they get together all the time. And um, that just, I joined these guilds and stuff, but it hasn't turned out to be uh, a lot of socializing with the artists and getting to know them and things like that. It hasn't, maybe it's me, <laughs> but I try, I try. I come out in the world um, every now and then and I apply to open calls. I get my work out there. I, um, competitions and things like that. So usually what I do is I'm kind of like a turtle. I come out for a while, and then I pull back in. I have a big 
garage door here I can open when it's uh, when it gets warm and so I can actually work outside a little bit uh, which is good I can work with if I want to work with the resins for example I really have to work outside so um, and spray paint and uh, that's all outside work so that's basically it when it gets I have a warm weather things I can do uh, and uh, my favorite is to open the garage door here when it's raining. And I like to work when it's raining. Very, very lovely. Very lovely experience. <laughs> That's my favorite, I guess, yeah. I think it's the connection with nature. I think if you think about it, if you're walking down the street at, at normally, and then think about walking down the street when it's raining, but a oh, pretty heavy, steady rain. I think that you're more connected, you're more immersed uh, in nature when it's raining, when it's, you're enveloped in it. Um, I also like working in the middle of the night. If I get up, what happens to me a lot is I get up in the middle of the night. Maybe I want a snack or something. I come down and I go, let me check in the studio on that, on that piece and see how it's doing. And then I come down <laughs> and then I see, and then I see something that it needs and then I end up working on it. But that's another point about being independent, about having really no family, I'm not a, um, you can do things like that. You can work on the studio anytime, day or night. I do have a lovely wife uh, and that was just in the last four years. So I'm not so very, very uh, alone anymore. Yes, a lot of times in the, uh, in the past, I don't know, the past recent period, a lot of times I come up out of the studio just in despair. <laughs> depleted, depleted to the point of despair um, and want to give up. Uh, and a lot of times I've been slaving away on this piece that I've been working on to exhaustion and I come up and I'm in despair and I um, uh, and I come back the next morning, you know, I think the piece is no good and it's, it's just, I put all this work into it and I've taken it as far as I can take it and it's just not happening. And sometimes I come back the next morning and I turn the light on and I look at it and I go, oh my God, it's done. <laughs> I guess I was just, you know, too close to it. And like you say, too depleted. And I, uh, so I come back and look at it and things aren't so bad. And the next day I, I decide to carry on. I just, you know, lately I've been thinking about quitting a lot. Um, but I think what would be the alternative? The alternative would be worse. And I just went out and bought about $700 of new materials. So I guess I'm going to continue. <laughs> I think you find that the, uh, one of the wonderful things about artists of any type or style is they're, they're a, a species of human being that uh, usually always looks forward uh, they're, they're always 
are excited about about the new things that are going to happen uh, as they age, as they get older. I think one of the things you see the artists have uh, 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 more, they're just more positive, they're more excited about the future than people, than that so many people that have careers and then they retire and they don't and things, what am I gonna do with myself? You know, artists don't have that issue of what am I gonna do with myself? So that's a blessing. Originality. I think uh, it enables, I think self-taught artists are, are more original because they're not conditioned. They don't have that condition, you know, of the art school and the art establishment. Um, so you see more pretty, more wild stuff, uh, like the naive painters, you know, art, art brute and uh, outsider art, which has become so huge over the past 30 or 40 years, outsider art. You see all the, uh, when you look at outsider art, those, that's all the attributes of being what self-taught is. That contains, if you go to an outsider art show, then you can see what are the benefits of uh, being self-taught. No, I think it's about the same. I think everybody learns. There are a lot of artists, of course, that keep making, painting the same painting or, but that's, that's, their, that's what they have to do. They have to follow their own vision. Uh, artists, some artists, many artists are like, it's like looking at a, a wallpaper catalog where you turn the page and okay, here's the same pattern, but in blue, here's the same piece. Ah, it's in green this time, you know? Um, but that's what they have to do. They're following their vision. They're following, they're being true to themselves. So um, I, you know, artists, you have to, you just have to encourage them. Whatever they're doing, you have to encourage them. That's what you have to do. Great. You know, like most artists, I love to talk about my work. <laughs> like most artists. <laughs>